Hello, welcome to the Monday, June 5th, 2017 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Fishing has long been used to capture a variety of different credentials and financial credentials, of course, like bank accounts have always been at the top of the list. Now with Bitcoin becoming more valuable, phishing scams that are now going after credentials for Bitcoin exchanges and Bitcoin wallets themselves, of course, are becoming more popular. A Bitcoin wallet is really nothing more than a key pair, the secret key that you keep on your own system. Sometimes you deposit it with a Bitcoin exchange to make it easier to trade Bitcoins. And then the public key, essentially the address that people use to send you Bitcoin. In the case of a Bitcoin exchange account, all that is often required in order to gain access to this Bitcoin wallet is a username and a password. He wrote up one recent incident. He documented a phishing attempt against users of Blockchain, one of the larger and more established Bitcoin companies that hosts users' Bitcoin wallets. Blockchain does offer two-factor and SMS-based authentication as an option, but apparently doesn't require it. Now, Xavier also found part of the code used by the attacker on the affected website was used as a phishing page. As so often, the website was compromised and the phishing site was then added to an existing website in a subdirectory. The email address receiving harvested credentials was still present on the server, but most of the remainder of that phishing kit had been removed by the time Xavier looked at it. One common technique to inspect a possibly malicious link is to hover over it. Usually you'll see the actual URL the link refers to and you're easier than able to figure out whether this link is actually malicious. In PowerPoint, however, links may still trigger macro execution if a user just hovers over a link. This has recently been exploited in some malicious PowerPoint files according to several blog posts, the user will actually still receive a security warning and you still have to enable macros. So it's not as simple as just hovering over it. Hovering over the link will start the macro execution, which really just starts security warning. The user has to enable macros and then the macro will run, but still makes it a little bit um, easier for the attacker to sneak a malicious macro past a user. And last week, we also learned a little bit more about yet another tool that was leaked as part of the Vault 7 release by WikiLeaks. Now, in this case, the tool itself has not been leaked as far as I know, just a manual describing the tool. The tool is known as Pandemic, and the tool is used to help with lateral movement in networks after the initial compromise of a file server. The tool will then wait for incoming file requests and replaced any requested file with malware. According to the description in the manual, multiple files can be specified and the files may be for 32 or 64 bit systems. But for example, with a PowerPoint file, a malicious actor could easily modify then an existing PowerPoint, add a malicious macro to it. And once a file is being requested from the server, the malicious file is being delivered without actually having to change the files on the server. That's the big deal here. Now, if you have compromised the server, of course, you could just replace files, but that's easier to spot than this tool that will just on the fly then replace the file whenever it is requested. One long ongoing issue with TLS is whether or not a specific certificate is still valid and how to revoke certificates. Now, the original solution was certificate revocation lists. Uh, These are essentially lists that list all the revoked certificates. That's a fairly cumbersome way of dealing with this problem. So to make this a little bit more agile, the online certificate status protocol was introduced, short OCSP. And what you find in certificates commonly is a URL for certificate revocation list and a URL 
for an OCSP service that should be queried whether or not a certificate is still valid. Well, it uh, turns out that uh, this is somewhat problematic. Uh, so now when you connect to a TLS website, your browser first has to also connect to the OCSP service, which of course means an extra HTTP request, an extra round trip. To fix this, to make this faster, we have something called OCSP stapling. Now, OCSP stapling is something that the web server does. It will request a short time signature for a particular certificate, attach it to the certificate, and then the browser, at least that's the idea, doesn't have to go to the OCSP service. Problem here is that major web servers just don't implement this OCSP stapling correctly. So the end effect is that for the most part, browsers are really just ignoring OCSP and uh, Chrome has actually ignored it uh, for a while now already. Firefox or Mozilla is going to follow suit now likely. They're currently experimenting with this to figure out uh, whether or not they're going to implement this as a default the overall value has long been somewhat controversial. For example, I think it was a week ago where Let's Encrypt's OCSP server failed for quite a while. And well, uh, most browsers just don't care, for example, if there is no response at all from an OCSP service. So we'll see how this goes. But the big problem here is that browsers really still don't have a valid way to figure out whether or not a certificate that they just received from a site is still legit. Well, uh, that's it uh, for uh, today. The next couple of weeks, I'll actually be traveling quite a bit. So maybe I'll uh, see some listeners while on the road. Uh, this uh, coming week, I'll be in Washington, D.C. at the SANS SOC Summit. I'll be teaching intrusion detection in depth. Now, if you're interested in this class, I'll actually be teaching it again uh, last week of June in Columbia, Maryland. Uh, so if you're interested in that, I think there's still seats open. Also, the defending web application class the other class uh, i'll be teaching i'll be teaching in uh, minneapolis that's the week uh, before columbia so on the 19th june 19th thanks and uh, talk to you again tomorrow bye